Good morning. Can you guys hear me? Cool. Good, good, good. Uh, I'm going to just wait a couple minutes just because I knew the new, the, I know the new format of Zoom is with the password and the waiting room and stuff. Sometimes it takes a second to get everybody in. Okay, don't see anybody else in the waiting room. That's good, I think. <clears throat> okay, um, I'm just gonna start by saying uh, what we need for these. Um, really, you could do these in your notes or if you wanna like start yourself a Google Doc where you're working on them, that's fine too. Um, I kind of feel like it's better to be in a place where you can handwrite. Um, some stuff as well, because for a lot of FRQs, you might want to draw yourself pictures and diagrams. So being able to do that easily um, is going to make you a little bit uh, quicker when you're answering them. Um, we're going to go over all kinds of FRQs in the next five weeks, like a time. Whoa, story, breakfast looks delicious. <laughs> um, but basically, like as I explained in the email, you're AP exam is only FRQs, that's it, there's two. Um, you have a 65% weighted question, which is considered one of their long FRQs, and then you have a 35% weighted question, which is a short FRQ. Um, and like, the internet is a lovely place worth of thousands and thousands of FRQs out there. So we're gonna do a lot of these over the next five weeks, you'll be so sick of them, but at the same time, you'll be really good at doing them fast because it's not necessarily about, or completely about what you know, because I have no doubt you guys have the knowledge of um, all of these FRQs in your brains. You've learned all the stuff. You guys are very well-spoken on the subjects um, that will be tested on, but the thing is the time limit. Like you have exactly 25 minutes to get your answer done. Um, and you need to be concise and you need to get it out there, get it on paper, and then not second guess yourself, submit it, and move on. Um, and I think that's gonna be our biggest challenge. Um, at least what I've seen of, of teenagers is that they, you, you guys second guess yourselves on tests. Um, you, you know, write something down and then, especially if it's multiple choice, you're like, well, that one kind of sounds the same too. Maybe I should change it, I'm not sure. And then you end up changing it and you had it right in the first place. So um, at least FRQs, there's not like choices for you to second guess, but you can easily, do that in your own head or get too wordy. Um, sometimes, you know, saying too much is going to be too much for some of these FRQs because um, your scorers really want to be able to see that you know the answer right away and move on to your next one. Um, they don't want to have to search for what you mean because you've drowned your answer in all this wordiness because you want to sound smart. Blah. Um, I'm going to be a broken record with all these tips. I'm going to say them a million times. Um, and I'm going to scrutinize your FRQs to death because I just really want you to be able to get them out on paper, be concise, and get that five and move on. Okay. Um, I feel like I went on a tangent. What was that? What was my point here? Um, we're going to work on a lot of FRQs in the morning. Um, basically, you'll just need something to write with and write on. Again, being able to hand write so that you can draw a picture is probably the best case scenario, but totally fine if you're just other type for draw on your iPad. Um, I'm going to give you an FRQ. We're going to break the FRQ down to what it's actually asking. Um, give you a couple tips on what I think you should look for as you dive into it. Then I'll give you like 
Uh, I mean, on this one today, it's a short FRQ. So I'll give you the 15 minutes, the full 15 minutes to try it. And um, then we'll go over the answer and talk about, you know, uh, what I think you should have wrote. We're in a small enough group that we might be able to, you know, look at close to all of yours, or at least, you know, if you have major questions, you can show me yours and we'll see what it looks like. Um, but if you want feedback on yours and I didn't get to it one of these mornings, like let's say we have a long FRQ and we just don't get to it, feel free to email me your response um, to it and I can look over it and tell you what I would have given it as a score. Um, we all know that I'm way too nice when I grade though, so just take that with a grain of salt. If I'm like, that sounds great, be like, oh, I don't know. Let's that. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, the other thing I just wanted to just shed a little bit of light on before I move on are your assignments for the week, um, and really the next five weeks for that matter. Um, you probably noticed that I went in, I made a task list for the week, it included a lot of review and review notes, um, and then I pulled us back on what was actually required, um, because it, we're, we're up against this battle right now um, in our current um, learning format, where we really are not supposed to be giving you guys a ton of work to do, um, which I can understand. You guys are overwhelmed by the situation. You're overwhelmed with screen time, um, and that is all justifiable. I, I feel you on that. Um, at the same time, I'm also up against this, this you know, what conflict that you guys have an AP exam. Like, Yes, is it going to be watered down a ton and probably way easier than the past? Yeah, but I still feel like I owe it to you to give you as many opportunities to study and prepare that I possibly can. Um, so basically what I did is I just took all the things that I thought you should be doing this week and I made half of them optional. Um, so you don't have to do it. It's not like part of your assignment anymore. Um, but I really do recommend you, if you have the time or on the weekends, and you feel like you can devote some more time to looking up resources, watching more practice videos, um, I really think it's, it's only going to benefit you. Um, the, I'll talk about this again more on Wednesday, but the, the uh, review videos that are done by the AP, those are the ones that are part of our assignments and that like you really, really, really should watch. These are people that write the AP questions. These are people that score your AP FRQs. And they're literally making videos and saying, here's what you should study. So we definitely should be watching those. The ones that are done by College Board on YouTube, their channel. Definitely, definitely, definitely watch those. Even if you put it on, you know, high speed, 1.5, and just like zone out and just kind of listen to them. And then when they start doing FRQs, that's when you, you know, practice with them. Totally fine. If you feel like uh, the content review, I got that down. I totally get that. But they're literally giving you practice FRQ questions telling you what to write and then telling you how that would be scored. So I, those are vastly important. I wouldn't skip those. But then um, Fiveable is an AP um, resource website um, that's really good too. Again, this is, these are some people that have been around with the AP a really long time that are creating review videos um, and also showing practice FRQs, even FRQs in light of this. So to me that says, these people that are making these videos are in the know. They know which questions are actually going to be given this particular year, 2020. So I think it's important that we kind of follow those as well. Um, but again, those are not required for our class. Oh my gosh. I feel like I just like vomited all this information on you. Okay, let's do some FRQs. I don't think there's anyone in the waiting room, so I'm gonna close this and make this bigger. And then, let's see, I hope my pen works. I haven't charged it all spring break. Okay, nope, of course you're dead. So we have to charge you and write with you at the same time. Let's see how that works out. Okay, okay. So, um, let me see if I can 
Is there a way? Okay, where's my sugar? I don't want to write this. Um, stand by. Okay, well, maybe if I do this, but then I can't write on it. What do I do? Okay, well, I'm going to at least share this with you, um, and then it, you can have it to copy down, and then I'll copy it down afterwards, and we'll chat about it. It's not a big deal. Um, but here, this one, share. Okay, just a thumbs up from anyone that you can see this FRQ. Okay, so this is the FRQ we're working on this morning. Again, it's a short FRQ. That means it would be weighted 35% and only give, you are only given 15 minutes to respond to this. Um, now, for most of us, especially in a test setting, at least two of those minutes are just going to be reading this, right? Because we're going to read through it. We're going to be like, oh my God, number two. The unique properties of water make life possible on Earth. Select the properties of water and for each property. Like, and you're just going to jam through it, right? You're going to read it so fast. And then you're going to be like, oh my God, I did not read anything. I just said words because I was so nervous. And now I need to go back and actually read what it wrote or what it's trying to ask me. So just know that just reading these questions, especially the big FRQs, are going to take you part of your time. So factor that in when you're practicing. Um, that you know, you only only give yourself ten minutes because you feel like you're going to go back and read it, much. or practice reading for content the first time you read. Really, like close your eyes for a second and then open them and read for content. Don't just read to read. I'll give you um, a minute or two to jot this down or take a screenshot or whatever you're doing so that you can uh, be ready to practice. Um, if at all possible right now, try not to answer it yet. Just jot it down or screenshot it, like I said, because we're going to kind of pick this puppy apart. And I would rather you practice it within the time allotted versus like having all this time to think about it. So, um, but oh, it's totally okay if you don't do it that way. Okay. Um, okay, so we're going to start to break this thing apart a little bit. No worries if you're not done. I'm not going to take it off the screen quite yet, um, but I am going to read it aloud. Um, the, the actual statement is, the unique properties of water make life possible on Earth. Select three properties of water. Okay, so that's going to be the first thing that we have to do is we need to select three properties of water. And then it's twofold, which this is, you know, we've, we've probably been doing these all year in AP Bio, but these free, uh, free response questions, they have multiple steps, right? Every time you guys do an EQ in class, it's got multiple steps for basically the same concept. So A, for each property, identify and define the property and explain it in terms of the physical, chemical natures of water. And then, for each property, describe one example of how the property affects the functioning of the living organisms. Okay, um, gonna stop share for a minute, but I will bring this back up once you guys um, get into it. And I'm gonna go to my whiteboard instead. I just want down, maybe just around the question or on some separate notes for FRQs. Okay, so some of the things that are going to, you're going to see a ton of when you're looking at FRQs. And now I know that it's, this is going to feel crazy because we're going to, you're going to do at least an FRQ a day probably for the next five weeks, right? So you're gonna have an arsenal of having done 20 plus, 25 plus FRQs before you get into this, and you really only have to do two when it comes down to it. But it doesn't hurt because you just don't know which ones you're gonna see. So you're gonna see a ton of um, you know, uh, 
adjective type words come up when you are reading these questions and knowing exactly what they're asking will help you in answering. So one of the words you see is describe. And just think about what the definition of describe is. Just the definition of describe is to give an account of something. Story. It's to convey an idea or an impression. So again, storytelling. An idea of your thoughts, tensions, knowledge of, An impression is your opinion. Describing is to characterize. Looks, the feel. And you. <clears throat> so simply by them saying describe something, they want you to do all of this. Now you can still do that really concisely. You don't need to be telling a story about water. Once upon a time, there was a little molecule called water. It contained oxygen. I mean, yeah, you're gonna tell them some stuff, but don't get too wordy in it. Remember, we wanna be concise. Concise, concise, concise is the key. You don't want them to have to search for an answer. Okay. Another word that they use in our question is identify. Identify means to establish or recognize. To see it, to point it out. to ascertain as something. Ascertain means to prove or to show how you know it is what it is or it is what you say it is. Look at my delicious cup of tea. How do, you, how do I know, how do I identify to you that this is a cup of tea? Oh, well, it's in a ceramic mug. Um, the liquid inside is hot. It contains um, juices of leaves um, and it nourishes my body. Therefore, it's a warm cup of tea. That is how I ascertained to you or identified what this was. And I got a little bit crowded on my page today, so I'm kind of going up at the top. Just tell me if it's kind of in your way. Um, but the last word that um, they use that you'll need to kind of unpack 
during your explanation is explain. And now you may be thinking to yourself, and rightfully so, oh, do I have a highlighter? Is this a highlighter? Yes. How are describe and explain different? Seems the same, Ms. Masonette. Describe, explain, no, it's not. And sometimes you'll have one on an FRQ, and one, sometimes you'll have both, and sometimes you'll only have the other. This is where things get a little tricky. You only want to do what they say to do. Try really hard not to describe and explain and identify and prove all in one question if they only asked you to describe. So how is explain a little different? It's to make plain or comprehensible to your reader. Just want to make it easy. Somebody's here. Who are you? Oh, somebody's in the chat. Emma, isn't the AP open note? Yeah, Emma, it is. Isn't that delightful? So you could have these right here next to you if you wanted to. So you could be like, oh, look, here's all my words that I know exactly what I need to do. Um, and so when they say describe, okay, here's the things I need to do for describe. Here's the things I need to do for explain. And then not for nothing, not for nothing, Emma, and this is a great point, and remind me to say this every time we meet, you could see almost the exact FRQ that we've practiced. If we practice enough of these, 25 of them, there's a really good chance that one of the ones you get on your AP will be one that you've already done. And we already self-graded and felt really good about it and you literally just have to recopy it down. Like how great will that be? Then you don't even, then you can just be like, oh man, yeah, I did this one, I felt really good about it. Maybe I put some finishing touches on it, but bam, I'm done. But then what's the worst part about doing that? Oh my gosh, I just need to see. This. Oh gosh, where are you? Um, if I stop sharing though, will I be able to come back? I'm too scared. Anyway, the point is that if you got like, let's say you got this exact FRQ and then you, you're like, yes, I, I know this one. I wrote it down already. You write down your answer. The whole thing takes you four minutes. What is a standard teenager going to do with the rest of their time? It's all right if you don't want to admit it, but you're going to panic and you're going to try to write more. You're going to be like, oh my gosh, I have more time. Maybe I should write more things. Maybe I should add more to this. Maybe I should draw another picture for them. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I should try to think of a smarter word for this easy word, even though it told me to explain it in plain, comprehensible words. Maybe I'll find the biggest word I possibly can. I know. I'll use my time to go online and find an adjective or find a, what's it called, synonym for this word so that I sound smarter. Right? And then what are you doing? It's like, are you crazy? Don't do that. Just know and be confident. Like, yes, I answered the question exactly how they wanted me to. I am done. Move on. Go, put it away. You're done. You did it. Good job. That's my, my, my biggest tip. You're going to second guess yourself and you're going to take it to the very last minute. You're like, oh my gosh, I have 30 seconds left. What else can I write? Should I draw a star? Oh, silly kids. Oh, I just love you. Okay. Um, okay, so these are our three words that you want to make sure that you, um, you know, uh, complete for them or you know, that you're thorough when you're answering. You want to make sure that you explain and identify and describe when they ask you to and only when they ask you to. Okay, so, oh, mustard, I lost my version of the question. Okay, so again, if we're looking at the question, everyone okay if I go to another page here? It asks us first to select, oops, select three properties of water. Remember, a property is like a characteristic. and you're going to need three of them, at least three. There's a, a ton. So maybe you, you give yourself, you know, on a scratch piece of paper first, lots of them to choose from so that you know where you're going. 
and you maybe you know more about one than the other. Then again, simplify it for yourself because you don't want to overdo it. Don't tell me everything there is to know about water. Just answer the questions. For each of the properties that you choose, so let's say you pick three properties, and you're gonna go off on your tangent on those. For each of those, identify and define what the property is. Remember, identify is to establish. Prove to me that you know what this is. What is this property? If you're going to tell me it's a liquid, tell me what a liquid is. You know, if you're gonna tell me, oh, um, this is an organic molecule, prove to me that you know what organic is. And then explain it, right? So make it really clear for your reader. Explain in plain words, no crazy synonyms. Explain what it, you know, what it is in terms of the physical and chemical natures of water. So how does that property pertain to water? Oh, it's or organic? It is organic because it contains an oxygen, which is an organic atom, and, a hy and two hydrogens, which are also organic whatever. Okay, then the second part says, for each property, describe, right? So now you get to tell me a story. Describe means tell me a story. Um, describe one example of how the property affects the functioning of living organisms. So for me, first, right, I listed my three properties. Then I'm going to explain them, I'm prove to them that I know what that is. And then after I explain all three, then I'm also going to describe, oops, describe how they pertain to functioning living organisms. And you do that for all three properties. Now, how you do that is up to you. You can draw a picture, you can make it a flow chart like this, or you can write in complete sentences. It is all about your reader understanding what you have written in a very clear and concise way. Is, do you make it super easy for them to see that you know what you're talking about? This is not the time to write a beautiful prose with a, with a, um, you know, a, some kind of, what is it called in English? What's a hypothesis called in English? Thesis statement, right? Yeah, when you don't, don't write a thesis statement and a conclusion and a body paragraph. No, 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 no. This is a 15 minute response. Get it out on paper. Make sure that you have done what they've asked. Describe, identify, explain, and then move on. All right, I think it's time I give you the opportunity to actually answer this one. Give you 15 minutes. Starting now, you might not need it. Don't overthink this either. This one especially, I mean, we're starting easy, right? We're starting with properties of water. I know you guys know all about it. Don't overthink it. Don't think to yourself, oh man, um, Maybe there's something about water, I don't know. I should take this time to Google water. Come on, give me a break. Don't you dare Google water. You know everything there is to, you need to know about it. Think of three properties.
So we're already about five and a half minutes in. We shouldn't be done yet, or maybe you are, that's great. But you should definitely be past the point of reading and listing your three properties. Hopefully you're in the explanation stage of each of those three properties. And remember, explain, don't get over wordy. You're just trying to make it easy for your reader. Because if you said some big long word, Covalent bonding. Explain that. What is covalent bonding? Oh, there's another question in the chat. I'll just kind of quietly answer it. Would the AP being open note mean that they are expecting more from us than what our regular answers are? Um, no, definitely not. Um, they are just basically, um, what's the word for this? They're basically admitting, no, they're just telling you, hey, we, we know you're gonna. So before you even say, hey, I'm gonna use my notes because no one's watching, we're gonna say, you can, me. <laughs> um, it's, it's 
that's all it is. It's just them approving the fact that you can use all of the tools at home. Um, so no, I would not take that as, oh, I better have more. Um, because again, where they get you in this um, is being prepared um, because the time is so short. And again, 25 minutes might seem like a long time for some of these longer ones, um, but it's not. When you have not just A and B, it's A, B, C, D, E you have to get through in 25 minutes. Being prepared for this is going to be, you know, where you benefit. If you've already seen a question similar to that and you can pull from a pile of FRQs that we've already practiced and start to pull from things that you've already written down, you're going to be super efficient about it. If you have to think about A through E and come up with a plan for how you're going to write that in 25 minutes, you're not going to do it. If you're, if you're trying to struggle through looking through your notes, oh, like, oh, I got to remind myself about genetic variation in a Punnett square, blah, blah, blah. Like, if you're trying to learn that again while you're in the 25 minutes, it's not going to happen. If all you have to do is go to your FRQ that you practiced on Punnett squares, you're like, ah, perfect, this is the one, that's, you're going to be way more efficient and have a better chance of um, getting a higher score. So, yeah, for this particular exam, where they, where they expect to get you is in the timing. All right, you still have about five more minutes, but if I could just get a check in. I know I can't see all your faces, but you can throw it in the chat if you want to, if you need more time. Anyone need more time? Yeah, okay, couple, cool. Yep, take your time. You still have five technically on this question. If you're done and you have questions um, that don't particularly pertain to this particular FRQ, so anything else, I'm happy to answer them in the meantime. Okay, we're down to about two more minutes, which at this point, I would say that you are probably wrapping up your answers, maybe going back and reading through everything and, you know, making sure you didn't make any major spelling errors that would make something unclear and you're not graded on spelling, but if it's something that made it unclear all of a sudden um, to your reader, that could make them, you know, be like, uh, what's going on? I don't understand. You just want to be clear to them that you know what you're talking about. I have no doubt that all of you have great answers to this, but it's how you can bait it to your reader that is what's going to get you those fives.
Okay, as you're wrapping up your answers, I'm just going to um, chat with you really quick about the upload. So once your 15 minutes is up, um, basically what happens is they'll give you like a countdown. You have five minutes to upload your response. Now, would it matter if you were you know, still finishing up your response and only took four minutes to upload? No, not at all. It doesn't, they're not really taking that into account um, because they're not, watching no one can see what you're what you're doing in that 25 minutes or 15 minutes of your response again you could be doing it on a scratch piece of paper and that's how, and then you're going to take a picture it, it, there's no right or wrong on where you respond you could respond in a google doc you could respond um in notability on your ipad but the upload process they make it seem like you need a long time to upload your answer you don't it's just as easy as you've uploaded any other assignment in your life. There's a Dropbox, it says choose your file. You click choose your file and you pick whichever file you want to upload. Maybe you saved a screenshot of something that you wrote down or you took a picture of it and you wanna upload literally a scratch piece of paper. Maybe you did it in Google Docs so you saved it as a PDF and now you wanna upload that PDF. Maybe you were in Notability so you download that and then upload it into the system. It's nothing like you haven't seen this before. This is something very, the, the, the format is super um, familiar to you. Um, and you can pick any kind of file. Well, that's not true. I think they say uh, doc, PDF, JPEG, JNP, like, you know, just your standard file types that would be okay to upload. You can't though, however, upload a video of yourself. Um, I, I don't think you can upload um, like Excel graphs and things like that. So definitely don't spend time graphing something in Excel. Um, but, you know, even if it's just a scratch piece of paper, the point is take a picture, upload it. That takes you what? 35 seconds, a minute. And then again, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, did I do it right? There's still five minutes left. I don't know what to do. Oh my gosh. You're okay. You did it. It'll show you the check mark. We got it. Is this, and it'll show you a picture back. Is this what you want to submit? Yep. Looks exactly like what I wanted to submit. Perfect. And then you'll click submit and you'll be pushed on to the next one or you'll be done. Um, can you start the upload process before your time for response is up? Absolutely. So let's say this is a 15 minute short FRQ and you finish it in five minutes because you found the one that we practiced and you're like, yep, that seems good. I think I just want to upload that. Snap a picture of it. Can I upload it right now in the first minute of this question? Yeah, absolutely. If you're confident and you feel good, take that picture, upload it and you're done. I mean, you, I think we should all, I think one of the last things we should do right before it, like the week before, we should just all make little signs for ourselves that are like, don't overthink this. It's okay to finish early. Don't use unnecessary words. And just remind yourself that you got this, you know what it is, be clear and concise, upload it, be done, walk away. <laughs> okay, um, we've already gone 45 minutes. I think it's because I chatted so much at the beginning. Um, but I would love to hear some of your responses um, or see them if anyone wants to share or answer questions about them. Again, if you're not, you don't feel like sharing in the group, that's totally fine. You can always email it to me um, and I'm happy to look over it. But anyone want to at least share one of the properties of water that they, they did? You don't have to share all three, but just maybe one. I did cohesion and adhesion and high specific heat. Okay, great. So um, were those all three of them, Chanel, or did you do um, adhesion, cohesion in one? Uh, no, I did all three of those. Perfect. So one is cohesion, one is adhesion, and one is specific heat. Yeah. Beautiful. So Chanel kind of like, um, she did it exactly right, and she was going, I thought maybe she didn't, and then I was going to be like, ah, here's something you can do. but. One thing that kids or students would fall into is doing adhesion and cohesion in one. They can do this and this. That's two things, that is two properties. So make sure you split that kind of stuff up. Um, another one that I saw um, in one of the videos where she was like, this is three and not one, is water can come in solid, liquid, and gas. That's three properties, not one. And they'll ding you for that, they'll be like, you just gave me three and one. That's, you know, you can say there are different phases of water and then describe that afterwards and how that pertains to life on the planet. But don't say 
water can come as a solid, liquid, and a gas. And that, now you've just said three properties instead of one. So Chanel already covered her bases with that. That was great. Um, Chanel, you want to um, just tell us how you described, um, let's do specific heat as far as how it pertains to um, living organisms? Yeah, uh, I first said, I first explained how it can give a specific environment because it provides stable temperatures since it has a high specific heat. And then I went into detail by saying, um, like giving a specific environment, which is like a lake where fish live. And I said this, uh, this, uh, this stable temperature because it doesn't boil at a high heat or freeze at high heat since it has that high specific heat. The fish don't have to like boil to death or freeze to death because it has a high specific heat in their environment. Perfect. The only thing I would say maybe you want to add is that, you know, it's, it's this symbiotic relationship between the living organisms and that property of water because those living organisms are also made of water. And that's why them having the same specific heat as what they're living in helps them to thrive. We're made of water, we live in a water environment, boom. Makes, us, makes it a good match, but that's perfect. Short and sweet. And then I have a question for, do sure. they have to be different examples for each one? Or um, let's look back at the question, but the answer is probably no. For each property, describe one example of how the properties affect the functioning of living organisms. Nope. You can circle back to that lake every time. That would be totally fine. If that's what you mean, like the fish in the lake, yep, you can circle back to the fish in the lake. Um, if your particular property that you're describing, you know, fits well into that story, because again, describing is telling a little baby story to them about how you know what you know about, you know, the definition of this property. So if that story makes the most sense to keep circling back to, great. Especially if you feel like your reader, it makes good sense to your reader. A great thermostat for your FRQs, you guys, is to show someone that has no idea about biology, like maybe your parents, I don't know, sibling, somebody, you know, like aunt, uncle, grandma, grandpa, what, whoever, show them your answers and see if they can get it by what you wrote. You know, that you don't have to say anymore, that like, even if they started off, no, I don't understand what a cohesion is, that, right, maybe they don't. But by the time they get to the end of your answer, they should kind of get it. Oh, I see. The fish in the water are going to live better because it's water and water isn't going to boil them. Cool. I can understand that. Okay. The good news is your scorers, the people that score you, are AP biology teachers and professors. So. These are people that do know science, thank goodness. So that, that part should feel a little bit better. But at the same time, they, they don't want to have to dig for it. All right, I don't want to go. Oh, yeah, CD. Um, I have a question. If you just said, like, it's a polar molecule and it can form hydrogen bonds, do you need to explain that? Or is that, like, is, is that Is that in your explain section? Yeah. Nope, that's perfect. All right. Yep. It, it is a polar molecule, and you said that, it, and so it can do hydrogen bonding. I would just make sure that you say something like, it can do hydrogen bonding with other polar molecules. Yeah, okay. Perfect. And then maybe, maybe you go a little deeper, or you draw a picture that shows a polar molecule is one that has a slightly negative side and a slightly positive side. Mm -hmm. Here is what that looks like in a, mo a water molecule. Here is the slightly negative oxygen. Here are the slightly positive hydrogens, or something like that. Right. Yeah, great, great, great. Again, please feel free to send me these responses in an email, and I can look at them as well and tell you what I think of them. Um, if you, this particular FRQ today came from one of the fiveable videos. So it came from the Unit 1 Practice FRQ 5 video. So if you want to hear what that teacher's particular um, ideas were towards it, you can um, listen to that video. I posted it in our task list. Um, but again, you don't have to. 
uh, I can look at them for you. Um, and you can share them with each other. Um, there is definitely something to be said for the fact that you guys um, consistently read each other's essay questions because um, you're getting to see how people respond to different answers. So that can help give you ideas, even if you don't have great feedback for someone, just reading their answer to this might, oh, that was a really good way to describe that. I get that. That's a great use of that word or that diagram or whatever it may be. Cool. Anyone else have questions about this FRQ beyond just wanting to send it to me? Yeah, Xander. Yeah, sorry, just real quick. So No, no, you're fine. Box, the unit one and unit two are different from what we're doing like currently, right? Like what we just did. The FRQ, does that make any sense? Um, I'm sorry, say it one more time for me. Yeah, so like the FRQ that we just did together, that's different yes. from the ones that are on the Dropbox, correct? Yes, okay. yes. So the ones that we will do in the mornings um, yeah. at breakfast at Tiffany's will be totally new FRQs to practice. So it's kind of okay. nice to be able to come to these and do them together. However, I will also post this um, recording of the Zoom just in case anyone wants to go back to it or people that missed it so that they have an opportunity to look at these FRQs as well. Um, okay. I do think it, it's beneficial to be able to chat through it together in the mornings, but you know, do whatever. If you need a sleep in day, it'll still be posted. But yes, to answer Xander's question, the FRQs that are actually due, because you only have to do two a week, you have to do two FRQs for me a week, um, those ones are totally different ones. Huh, I say totally. You probably are saying that because the FRQ that I posted for unit one, it almost looks exactly the same, right? It's again about yeah. water. So, and that's the thing, like, you know, Story may get the one that we did today for her real, um, her real AP exam, and Xander, you might get the one that was on and they're just, just slightly different, asking just barely a different question, you know, to test your scope. But that's why we're going to do so many so that you have an idea of what to look for. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Franklin. Oh, sweetie, I can't hear you for some reason. Uh-uh. No, no. Do you want to type it in the chat? Oh, no. Okay, type it in the chat. I won't go anywhere. Take your time. Anyone else have any questions? Yeah, Chanel. Um, for the AP video, so have the AP people provided any, like, questions? Because I know it's a bit different from the actual AP FRQs they usually do. So have they provided any practice questions for us or? Yes, so they've embedded some FRQs in the videos. Those ones you kind of have to dig for. And like, I would, I would pause when you see them pop up and screenshot them, um, which I've been doing too. So you'll probably see those mixed into our practice ones. Um, in addition, they've sent me of FRQs that I will mix into our assignments. I'll mix into, you know, just throwing them up there so that you can practice. Um, yeah, so that we can get our eyes on as many as possible. Did that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Yeah, you got it. Um, eventually, I think we'll end up catching up. We'll, we'll get really close to catching up with the AP videos because those are live streamed. Um, and they started over our spring break. Unfortunately, they started on the 8th. Um, and they're live streamed every day at 4 p.m. Eastern. Is that right? 4 p.m. Eastern. So that would be 1 p.m. our time. Um, so we have not particularly caught up yet. Yesterday we did the one that's on the 8th. Tomorrow or today we're doing two so that we can just slowly catch up with them. Now if you're like, you just want to blast through them and you did them all, then you can always, you know, start to catch the live versions as they happen. But just know at some point you won't be able to go any further. I hope that makes sense. Um, Franklin, there's a Dropbox for the Zoom FRQs on Haiku. So do we still turn them in at the end of the week? Oh, 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 right, right, right. Okay, so there should be, if I set it up right, there should be um, three FRQ Dropboxes. There should be a Unit 1 FRQ Dropbox. And that was, is this right? If I do this right, let's just look together. Um, it, if yeah, you don't, I think it's, I, I'm just looking at it. it oh, like good, it's Xander. It is. Okay, so we have a unit one FRQ Dropbox. Is that true? 
and then there should be a unit two FRQ Dropbox. Those are the, like the practice ones that I gave you just assigned. Then in our Zoom session on Wednesday with your small group, you'll do an FRQ there. And that is the one that goes in the Zoom FRQ Dropbox. Does that make sense? Franklin, did I answer your question? Oh, Franklin's gone. So <laughs> I'm gonna guess, I'm gonna guess that I answered it. So <laughs> she was like, and bye. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, okay, again, holler if you have any questions, send me your FRQs if you want me to look at them. Um, but again, it's all about getting that stuff down concise and then being okay with having extra time left over. Like, oh yeah, I need this one. Boom, move on, don't be scared. All right, you guys, hope to see you tomorrow. We'll do another totally different one on uh, unit two. See ya.